Larger facilities may want to create a facility plot plan that shows the footprint of all of the buildings, utility connections, and outlets to nearby roads, along with a description of the campus and facility services. Once you have gathered all these documents together, you will want to put them into a comprehensive manual and keep it in an easy to find location. Larger operations need to have several copies and should make sure all staff know where they are so they can grab them quickly during an evacuation. Whether you are a large or small operation, there are two scenarios you must be ready to handle. One that covers the need to evacuate the building and another for when you need to stay put. If you are asked to stay in the building, think ahead by preparing a few things ahead of time. First, you'll want to determine a safe room or rooms for everyone to gather. It should be an interior room with the fewest windows or vents and large enough for the designated group. It should also have emergency supplies and a landline telephone. Other emergencies might call for an evacuation of the premises, forcing everyone to gather at a meeting place outside. You should decide on two alternative locations, one nearby and one farther away. And once you have mapped out this evacuation plan, post it, showing at least two escape routes and the identified meeting locations. Then share a copy with families and local emergency officials. If your staff and residents are using multiple exits and meeting places, make sure you have the ability to communicate so that you can merge your roll call numbers for an accurate facility-wide headcount. Keep in mind that some emergencies may simply call for an evacuation of your home or building, but others may require an evacuation of the entire neighborhood. Think about how you would get everyone where they need to go. You'll have to have some transportation lined up using volunteers, additional staff, or even neighbors. If you are contracting with an in-town transportation company, please know that you are not alone. Others have too. It's a good idea to work with an out-of-town transportation company. It's also a good idea to put some sort of name tag on each person being transported. That way they are easily identified by personnel at their final destination and the correct emergency records will be associated with each resident. Whether you are evacuating or staying inside your building, there are some things you need to do in every crisis situation. Make sure staff know who they are responsible for and be aware of where everyone is at all times. Identify which clients or staff may require additional assistance during drills and actual emergencies. Think about how the people in your care will get their medicine and how you will attempt both vertical and horizontal evacuations without elevator service if the power is out. On the way out, staff should never stop to grab personal belongings. And whenever you are moving people in an emergency situation, be sure to count them often. It is critical to include local emergency officials in your planning and practice sessions. If they have a copy of your emergency plan ahead of time, they may have some great ideas to help you improve it, and they will be in a much better position to come to your rescue should a real crisis occur. Elderly folks and, uh, and people who might be disabled, they're always a high risk for us, and we're concerned about that. And anything we can do if we come in and we point things out, it's only for their safety and uh, to keep them safe and uh, to make our jobs a little bit easier when we arrive on the scene. When it comes down to an emergency, uh, we train for them every day. Uh, it's something that these folks might not be used to. We have expertise in many of the larger health departments with staff that are dedicated to doing this, and we can work with uh, facilities and administrators in order to guide them and help them put together their own plan. It's very important for these uh, facilities to contact their local fire department or police department or, or EMS uh, so that we have a designated person who, who's knowledgeable and knows what, what the fire department or EMS might be looking for when we show up on the scene of a disaster. When we show up, we want to know how many people they have in the building, uh, how many people uh, that may be able to walk, how many people in wheelchairs, how many people that may be bedridden. When you're planning and preparing a plan, you need to think about the unthinkable as well as the things you're more comfortable with, like tornadoes and floods that, that happen fairly often in different parts of the country. Uh, one of these things, for example, is bioterrorism. And if a facility administrator works with a health department ahead of time, arrangements can be made to be sure that they're in the distribution chain for pharmaceuticals, antibiotics, vaccines, should they ever be needed. We would hope that once people see this presentation and learn about Ready in 3, uh, that they would be 
uh, motivated or feel free and not nervous about calling their local health department. There are resources and people who can help you develop your own disaster plan. Contact the Planning and Development Unit within the Department of Health and Senior Services for more information. The second step in being prepared is to prepare an emergency kit. Large facilities will need several kits and they all should be ready for the staff to grab and go in case your facility is evacuated in a hurry. Each kit ought to include your all-important emergency manual and copies of your emergency plan and facility contacts, residents' medicine and special consideration documents, and contact information for their loved ones. Kits should also be packed with first aid supplies, sanitary items, flashlights, portable radios, batteries, and two-way radios or cell phones. In addition to these evacuation packs, it's also a good idea to store emergency supplies in your designated safe room. Again, you'll need your manual with facility and resident information, a first aid kit, blankets, a battery-powered radio, flashlights, and extra batteries. And don't forget about personal hygiene and sanitation supplies like toilet paper, paper towels, wet wipes, and plastic bags. You'll also want to have enough non-perishable food and water to last staff and clients for at least four days. That's one gallon of water per person per day. This really should be commercial bottled drinking water and should be replenished at least once a year to keep it fresh. When it comes to the non-perishable food, consider food allergies and keep a supply of disposable bowls and utensils, along with a manual can opener. You may even want to include decks of cards, magazines, and other fun items to keep everyone busy and keep their minds off the crisis at hand. In general, you may want to consider installing carbon monoxide detectors in addition to the required smoke detectors. And be sure to check them often. Ensure that fire extinguishers are properly charged and easy to reach. You might even consider having a generator professionally installed and maintained for backup power. <music> 